We are losing too many people. Don't you want to help? My voice is powerful, and the voices of other women are powerful. Our voices could literally change the world. Ask your health care provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life. Today, I'm talking to an icon, Dionne Warwick and her son Damon. Join me. Hello to you both. Nice seeing you, too. Good to see you, too. <laughs> Tell us about your fantastic work in HIV. I know that you lost your valet to an AIDS-related illness. Is that, is that for you, was that the moment that really lit, lit the flame, I guess, when it came to HIV? You know, not, not only losing Marvin um, at that point in, in my life, first of all, not knowing what it was that he passed on, nobody knew what AIDS was until it, get, it get, received a name once a face was put to it, and that face was Rock Hudson. My interest was a little selfish at, at that point because we started losing a lot of my industry. You know, our lighting people, our sound people, our dancers, our singers. I mean, people, they were just leaving. I, I lost my, my valet, I lost my hairdresser, you know, and it got to the point where I said, wait a minute, something's got to be done about this. What is this thing? And I became curious enough to reach out to CDC, Dr. Fauci, <laughs> and I became his nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> he still calls me that. <laughs> uh, I was appointed the ambassador of health for the United States, the only one that hasn't been one since me, by uh, President Reagan. And I took it upon myself to run around the world. So that was how it all began, out of curiosity more than anything else. But then it became something that um, meant something to me. We were losing too many people. What kind of, if at all, pushback did you get from colleagues or friends in the industry or like, you, you've gone on record saying, ask any of my friends, they'll tell you I'm crazy. Um, yeah. They must have been telling you that you were crazy. Why are you doing this? Yeah. This could kill your career. They did, they, they did. They all said, Dion, please, you know, leave, leave that alone, you know. You, you got to be insane. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I care. You know, we are losing too many people. Don't you want to help, you know, in some way, however you can, if nothing but talking about it or learning about it? Um, you know, you might be saving your own life. You never know. And you don't know how this thing is contracted until somebody tells you succinctly, a doctor or a, a, a researcher, this is the, how you contract it. Okay, now you know. That's knowledge. Mm -hmm. You got to know what you're fighting before you can fight it. And I, I, I believe in that in every aspect of life. Yeah. And Damon, for you growing up in this period as, as, a, as a young boy becoming a young man, in a, yeah. you know, this was scary. Um, what, did, what did you learn from the way your mother stood up to people and stood up to this unknown. I learned at a very young age how mom took stuff on like right away and was not afraid. She taught me and my older brother to not fear. I mean, when, when people were running out of the hospitals, mom was running into the hospital, like literally. When people were not wanting to touch their own children or seeing kids affected was really what was hard on me, you know. Um, children being born with this and then mom holding them when even doctors were like, whoa, you know, that to me showed me that, that her courage and her belief and her faith, you know, she, she knew that, that we would, you know, if, if the fight goes on, you educate yourself and you find the cure, you know, you find the solution. And that's, that's something I, I, I learned at a very young age. And, and a momentous moment, you know, Ronald Reagan, is famous for not saying the word AIDS. And who is, who is the person that got him to say it? And what was that moment like? I thought, I thought he was going to kill me. <laughs> if his eyes had been daggers, I'd be dead, okay? <laughs> but he had no choice. He had to. You know, he appointed me as the ambassador of health for the United States. And if I'm going to do my job, 
I have to have the person that appointed me do his job. Yeah. And uh, so I said, well, you got to get Come on. Now, what's what's this word? You, you're, you're, why are you so afraid to say the word AIDS? It's, it's a, an absolute what it is. And people have got to believe you, too. So in order for them to believe me, you got to come on. And uh, I finally embarrassed him to the point where he had no choice. Is that one of your proudest moments? <laughs> one of them, yes. <laughs> one of them, exactly. Um, I've got to imagine that's what Friends of Four is also a proud moment. How did that come about? You've donated the royalties for that song to Amphar. Uh, I yeah. was doing some digging yesterday, and we're now talking millions and millions and millions of dollars in royalties that you just gave, have given to, to Amphar. Yeah. How did the song come about? And famously, what did Clive Davis say to you about that? <laughs> yes, yeah, so wild that um, probably the biggest record I'll ever have in my lifetime, which is fine. Um, I uh, I was watching the film Night Shift, and I heard the song it's being sung by Rod Stewart. Um, I was in the throes of doing some work with Burt Backrack and Carol Bear Sager. And uh, they had played several songs for me. And uh, after hearing this song and watching the roll of the credits, and so that Bert and, and Carol had written this song, I said, well, why didn't they show me this song? <laughs> Fell in love with it, was saying all the right stuff. You know, friendships mean an awful lot to me. And I asked them, I said, well, why aren't we recording this? And they said, well, if you want to record it, fine. And so I called all, all three of those people that you see represented with me. Stevie, Elton, and, and Gladys, and that's going to be a part of this as friends. And they agreed. Um, Elizabeth Taylor happened to be in the studio while we were recording it. And she made the request that we give the song to her foundation because she's getting ready, she's just starting MFAR. And we felt because of the amount of people that we each within our group had unfortunately so I'm making transitions because of AIDS. We felt, well, why not? You know, if a talent's going to do something to stem this damn thing, let's get rid of it. And we gave it to Amphar. And uh, subsequently, every single dime from every entity, the recording studio, the tape, the engineers, the videographer, the record company, the publishing, every dime that was raised during the first part and continuously now goes directly to Empire. Oh, I get chills just thinking about it. This is one of those songs that yeah. just goes whack. It hits you where it, it hits you where it needs to hit you in such a in such a powerful but beautiful way. How much do you think this kind of music helps heal people? Let's say people who are living with HIV, even hearing it now, I find that song incredibly comforting as someone who yes, lives with HIV. It is. it is comforting. It is because it's a positive uh, approach to anything. You know, um, the, the beauty of the song, not only does it uh, sufficiently do things, as you said, comfort you, it's being used for graduations, it's used at births of babies, it's used at weddings, it's used at all different kinds of occasions. You know, I have friends who are leaving and going away for a long period of time, you know, parties. This song has taken on another genre altogether. It, it just, it's across the board. And, that, and still doing wonders for the HIV community. Yeah, you have referred to yourself as a messenger. But, you know, I know you don't. I know you don't like the term icon, although the rest of us <laughs> like it, and it's it is appropriate for you. But but you've called your your primary purpose as as what for what you do as a messenger. What is your message to people now in this day and age who still have an issue with people like me? who are afraid of HIV, who are afraid to get tested, who are afraid to talk about it. What's, you know, what's the it's message? Just a case, it's a case of basically, like I said, you have to understand what you're fighting or why you're fearing 
in order to combat both the fight and the fear. Um, it takes time to learn. You know, all you have to just learn. Ask somebody who knows. And that's me <laughs> or anybody else that has been in this fight along with me. I can't do it by myself. You know, I never thought I could do it by myself. Although I started that way. <laughs> so everybody was afraid. I don't want to be a part of it. Oh, yes, you do. You know, and after explaining to them and giving them data on on the issue, it all became clear to them. And it was like, oh, okay, now I know. Of course, now you know. That's, how, that's the only way you're going to become involved is with knowledge. Yeah. There you go. We say it all the time, knowledge is power. You're also a goodwill ambassador for I, and I, the uh, Global Authority on HIV and Aging. You know, we don't talk enough about aging and HIV. You have a great slogan <laughs> that I read, age is not a condom. Tell us about that one. I don't see any reason why someone over the age of 25 can enjoy life. And that basically what that meant. Yeah. You know, um, there are people who still are enjoying a very healthy, especially healthy self -life, sex life. And, uh, and they still need to know the parameters. So, you know, there is no age limit on it. None whatsoever. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm a certain age. I don't need to worry about HIV or other STIs because I've been there and done that. But you're right, exactly. age is not a condom. Uh, both of you, thank you so much for making the time. Uh, Dion, thank you for everything you've done for my community uh, and the world. Uh, you, you guys, thank it's you. been a real pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. That's gonna do it for this episode of Plus Talk. If you want more information about what we've talked about or just to check out Plus Life in general, go to the website, pluslifemedia.com and you can follow us across social media platforms. We are at Plus Life Media. Until next time, remember, that's what friends are for. Bye-bye.